Hi, welcome to video tutorial number 17, Sharing Your Work. Um, you probably have a patcher that looks something like this now, and I know many of you have already handed these in, um, but I wanted to go over a couple things for um, being helpful when you're sharing things. One thing is to make the patcher start up ready to play. And for a lot of things, um, you can write presets for them, and for other things, you can just use load bang. Um, we've gone over load bang before, but let's just do it again so we're used to load bang. Type an N for new, L O A D, there it is, load bang, fantastic. Okay, so what load bang does is when your patcher starts up, it sends out one single bang and it never sends it out at a different time. And that is very useful for taking care of some of your um, more obvious things. Now, bang isn't what you need to get everything working just the way you want it, um, but uh, you can have it work through other objects. So, for example, we want to make sure that the sound is on down here, and we would need to send that a 1. So let's type message 1. So now we're going to hit uh, bang when this opens. It's going to bang this one, and that one is going to go down here and make sure that the sound is on. Um, we want to make sure that this selector here is on uh, gate number one. Sometimes it isn't, I've noticed, when mine starts up and until I fiddle with the equal sign, it doesn't turn on. So I'm going to put one over to the selector. Um, and perhaps I want to have it always start on MIDI up here. I can just send a bang to this one. And it will always start on MIDI. Suppose you might recall that we have our um, list of voices here. I might want it to always start on a one as well. So why don't I just run that? I'm just going to run it down and over. Very good. So now, when that bang comes on, um, all of those things will be set to a good starting position. Um, one of the other things that we could do is if you wanted to have this volume always come on at a certain point, I personally like the volume down at the bottom, you could just set a low number um, let's say 25 and then it would always come on at a fairly low sound so um, well, we could put this anywhere really but let's just say just zoom out here that's a terrible place for that I'll put it underneath the load bang there we go so we'll bang on the 25 and that's where our volume will always be when it starts up okay so that's all looking good um, I wanted to also make a little note to people um, that if you have multiple buffers out there, because I found this was a problem with my own, um, I couldn't get one of the buffers to work all the time because um, you needed to send out this when you have your Fred sends out when Fred's done loading his buffer. But Ted, when Ted got done, didn't have anything to send out. It can send out the same thing, send out Fred done. And I'll show you why very quickly here because to get the info whoops, lock your patcher and let's look in super duper sampler here and any one of our super samplers should be good enough 
Um, right over here you see the receive object for Fred which tells it to get the info for whatever sampler, whatever buffer it's operating with. Okay, so whenever we change the buffer, we want the info object to go find the information for that buffer. So if we set to Fred, then when Fred's done, this thing should fire and send that in. We set to Ted, I know it looks like we should get a receive Ted done, but we don't really need it. We could just make it send buffer done, but that's too much work right now. We'll just have them both send Fred done, okay? I just wanted to clarify that for anyone who's having that particular problem. We'll put all this away, save our patcher, and put it away. And then let's open it. Uh, there it is. I have mine set to open uh, in display mode, but we'll get back to where we were here. Let's see if it's playing. Um, notice the volume's at 25% and probably... I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Oh. Great. Um, so that seems to be working, though I do notice that one is bright acoustic piano, not grand piano. I guess you have to send it a zero if you want grand piano. Up to you. Let me know. Okay, let's check our voices and make sure they're working. Electronic sound. Very nice. And our sampler not working at all because we didn't load anything. So we better go load something into our sampler. We'll try Anton, whatever that is, and we'll try Rainstick. Uh, Rainstick sounds silly. How about this one? I know not what it is. Show 0630. Okay, and then we'll choose one of our buffers perhaps, and listen to it. Haunting. And Ted? Alright, so everything's working pretty well. I suppose if you wanted to, you could um, uh, load bang either Fred or Ted or which buffer you wanted, but I like to be able to control that. Oh, let's check one more thing and that is make sure that our uh, microphone's working. Testing, one, two, three, four, he said as he's holding down his key. No, oh, that's why, because it's Fred. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, testing, two, one, testing, two, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, one testing. Two. Yep haunting, isn't it? Okay, so it looks like everything's starting up correctly, so um, that's the, our first problem to solve. Now our second thing is, um, as you've noticed, in um, display mode, my <clears throat> keyboard doesn't look all that interesting. So let's go, let's just unlock it and get out of display mode for a second, and you'll notice that the keyboard has a pink surrounding that means that it's been selected to be visible in presentation mode. Um, here I got, I'm gonna have to employ this, uh, get this uh, right hand pane going here so that we can use the inspector. Okay, so when we click on this, we can see that it is included in the presentation. So what you wanna do is go through your patcher and just click on items that you want to use in your presentation and you can actually shift click them uh, a voice effect, mouse effect, yeah I want to see that, I want to see that uh, I want to see this I guess I want to see this, it's so cute um, and uh, oops gotta be 
Anyway, click the ones you want. Cute thing again, that. And then go over here and click on Include in Presentation. And then you'll notice that they are all surrounded by pink now. And so you can go through the rest of your um, patcher and find the things that I don't like when it does that. Okay. You can include the rest of the things in exactly the same way. So I'm going to want to select these. Um, oh, I made this nice uh, comment here that told me what I was doing. I'm going to shift, click on that. Here's loop control, Fred and Ted. Uh, read for Fred and Ted. That would be a good idea. And uh, this that says loop sample. And uh, you know, you can just hit uh, Command I, which is probably Control I on PCs, and just get your inspector window up here and say include in presentation. Okay? So all the things that are pink now are going to come up when I hit the presentation button. And here it goes. They're all over the place. However, presentation mode has a locked mode and an unlocked mode too. So I can take all these things and I can put this um, over here as the, as the microphone and I can take these and I can move them over here. And I can take this and put it next to there. And it looks like that would fit in nicely there, although it's not labeled correctly. I guess I shouldn't put it there. I'll put it somewhere else. That's a sampler thing. So I'll put it here. Um, you can just gather up your objects and Put them where you want. Hmm, there we go. Loop sample and this toggle should be together. And I have this, which turns the sound on and off. And I guess I need some sort of uh, instruction for using that key, so I will type the letter C, and I'll type a comment, all in caps here, um, equals to record. I'll move that up here. And Oh, um, you know, it's pretty boring looking, so let's uh, type a new object and type the word panel in there. There we go. Wow, it even works with the capital letters. And there's our panel. And we can get our inspector by hitting Command-I, or you could just go over to the other pane. And I'm going to make my interior color... Um, that seems a little dark. There, very, very understated. I like that. Okay. And we'll put these away. And I'm going to stretch this. Right over everything. It'll just help me stay organized. Good. And now we can take this and um, include it in the background. And then we can say lock the background so that we don't have it moving around every time we accidentally select it. Now we can select these other things and not worry that it's going to go flying all over the place. Um, good. Now, obviously, this is not a perfect setup here, but it it looks relatively okay. 
So let's take our patcher window, grab it down here at the bottom right corner, and make it the size that you want it for when, it op when it's opened. And now, under view, there we go, you'll see if you can scroll down to define fixed initial window location. That's it. Click on it. And this will be your initial window location. You can also um, tell it to open um, see this patcher inspector? Underneath view look at patcher inspector click on it and here's the box that you want to notice open in presentation if this is unclicked it'll always open in regular view if you want it to open in presentation you just click this look at that and we save our patcher and let's put it away and now we'll just take it back out open recent patcher oh nice and everything should come up working fantastic it's not perfect nothing because we haven't loaded Fred or Ted um, let's uh, read something into Fred oops got to turn it up that's a little quiet and that's a little loud but it's working and we'll just make sure that our microphone works hello and uh, you gotta love that I guess I need to make a, a higher sound let me let me try something else hello very robotic and embarrassing at the same time. So that's it for this particular moment. Now you've got your homework um, saved in a very nice looking format and this is something that you can um, hand in and not worry too much about. And I'm going to be back with the next video to show you how to make an application out of it. It's very simple but I'm going to save it for the next one. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.